Next, we'll generate the geometry of our model. So I'll go to node and element, create nodes. So the coordinates would be 0, 0, 0. Origin, I'll click apply to create a node at the origin. So this are the display node and uh, display element numbers. I'll click on display node numbers. So this is my first node. Click close here. Now I'll go to extrude, extrude elements. I'll click on it. So here it's extrude elements. So extrude type is from node to line element. So from this node, I'm going to generate a line element. That means I'll be generating the girders. So you have different options. You can extrude from line to planar, planar to solid. I'll select node to line element. Select the element type as beam. So this is a beam type and the material as C40 and the girder section and the gen generation types translate. I'll click on unequal distance. So this is my global X direction. I'll select global X and give the distances as 0.4 comma 11 comma 11 comma 0.4. So this means uh, it would be 0.4 and plus 11 meters plus 11 meters plus 0.4 so I'll select so you have this selection options you can click on single select and select this node click escape to come out of the selection or you can click select all so all the node and elements in the model screen would be selected so I've selected the node I'll click apply so I'll click on this view so you have the isometric view front top so I'll click this. So this is the isometric view of the beam uh, section that we have generated now. So this would be 0 0.4, 11, 11, 0 0.4 means. So this is 0 0.4 meter. This would be 11 meters, 11 meters again and the 0 0.4 meters. To check the distances, you can go to query. Click on query notes. So click in the green box. First select the node and the next node. So it would give a give the distance between those nodes. So the units are meters. So you can change the units anytime in between the modeling. So this is force units and the length units. So I'll click close here. So I'll click close. Next, I'm going to copy this girder twice to generate my three girders at a spacing of three meters center to center. So I'll go to node and element, click on translate elements. So here I'll keep the mo mode as copy change this equal distance to 3 meters in y direction so I'm going to copy in this direction so I'll give the number of times as twice for two girders I'll click on intersect node and element copy node and element attributes so I can click the three dot button so these are all the attributes that I'm going to copy if you want to change you can change based on your requirement so this is regarding the node and element attributes I'll go to select all to select this girder I'll click apply. So these are my three girders with a spacing of three meters. Click close. So next I'll copy these three girders to the next pan which is 22.8 meters. So I'll go to translate. I'll keep the mode as copy. Now I'll give the in x direction I'll give the distance as 22.8 plus 0 0.04 which is 40 mm expansion joint number of times 1 I'll select intersect node and elements copy node and element attributes I'll select all I'll click apply so I'll click on this isometric view so this is my first span and this is my second span I'll go to front view click this zoom option so this is my expansion joint So I'll click front view, click close. Next, I'll create my end diaphragm. So I'll go to top view, click on create elements, element type as general beam, select material as C40, name as the section name as end diaphragm. This would be the section. 
click on nodal connectivity box so you have to select the first node and the second node so that the element would be created so I'll select this second node and the twelfth node similarly I'll continue the selection by 4 and 14 17 and 27 node this node so we have created the end diaphragms now I'll change this section to internal diaphragm select here click on 3 and 13 18 and 28 so I'll click close click on isometric view so click on rotate so you can rotate and see the bridge so this is how in reality our bridge looks like so this would be my end diaphragms and these are my internal diaphragms click this click on isometric so next we'll model the substructure part for that I'll turn on my tree menu 2 so tree menu 1 is this and I'll right click here to turn on tree menu 2 so this is same as the tree menu 1 there will not be any difference so I'll click on isometric view so here if you see uh, here the blue ones are the ones which are not being utilized in the model so others have been assigned so the, those have been turned uh, into black so I can quickly differentiate between them so next I'll go to node and element tab click on translate so I'll go to tree menu 2 and select my end diaphragms I'll double click here so these have been selected the end diaphragms I'll activate only them so here are the activate options so this is activate this is deactivate and this would be activate all so if you click inactivate so these elements would be inactive from the display not from the model so I'll click on only activate them so those only would be activated so I'll click here so I'll give the distance as 0.4 plus 0 0.04 by 2 in x direction and in z it would be minus 2.25 and you need to select the node from where the translation operation should perform so I'll go to single select select this node ninth node the number of times is one then I'll click apply so you can see one node has been created based on this distance you can go to top view so this is at the center so this is 40 mm by 2 that's what I have given so this is a peer cap node next I'll perform the extrude option from the node that I've created to generate my peer cap so I'll go to left view I'll click on extrude I'll go to single select select this node from here I wanna extrude so this is from node to line element I'll change my material to C30 for my substructure so I'll select peer cap mid I'll click on translate unequal distance in y direction in this direction so I'll give the distance as 0 0.75 comma 0.25 so before clicking apply you have to check whether the uh, node has been selected so I've selected it I'll click apply so this is my section in the positive y similarly I'll give it a negative y here you can click here for the previous selection whatever we have selected previously would be selected I'll click it here click apply so this is my peer cap mid section so now I'll generate the tapered uh, section of the peer cap so I'll change the section to peer cap taper then I'll click on equal distance so in Y I'll give the distance as minus 1 and I'll give the number of times as 3 then I need to select the node from where the extrude option should proceed so I'll go to single select and select node number 35 then click apply I'll go to left view to zoom out Similarly, I'll select node 33 
and give it as a positive direction Y and then click apply so this is how my uh, peer cap section looks like but this tapering is not right for that we'll be using another option called uh, tapered group to make a smooth tapering in between the sections so I'll click close here now I'll go to properties tab click on tapered group so what you can do is you can just group these elements so that the tapering would be automatically taken care by the program so I'll give the group name as Peer taper right I'll go to single select so here you have the hidden option you can turn off this so that you can see the wireframe model and you can switch between the section and the wireframe so you can appreciate that in Midas Civil you can work with the render view. Render view is not for not only for the display purpose. You are, you can actually work with the render view, unlike any any other programs. So I'll turn on them. Click here. I'll select these elements. So this is the right. So I'll select this. I'll click Escape. So this is the right part then the tapered variation would be linear linear I'll click add so you can see the smooth tapering has been generated in a similar way I'll generate for the left part of the peer cap give the name to single select just automatically select them automatically it gets updated at the list then I'll click add so you can see th this is how we can do this smooth tapering quickly so I'll click close so next I'll copy this node to this location peer cap bottom location from there I'll extrude from this node to form my shaft so I'll go to node and element click on translate nodes go to single select select this node I'll keep the mode as copy equal distance in Z direction I'll give the depth of the peer cap which is minus 1.8 number of times 1 then I'll click apply so this is my node I'll go to single select select this node I'll go to extrude now from this node I've selected I need to extrude a line element which would be my peer shaft so I'll change the pro metal property to C30 and I'll take peer this is my round section so I'll give the height of the peer shaft as minus 5.7 in Z direction so this would be extruded in the Z direction with a distance of 5.7 minus indicates negative Z downwards so now I'll click apply go to left view so this is how the peer shaft looks like I'll click close now if I click isometric view I can see only the ones which I have activated so if you want to activate all so you can click activate all to see the complete model that you have generated next I'll create my support and bearing nodes for that I'll go to tree menu 2 double click on the end diaphragm section so those get selected now I'll activate only them so I'll click activate so now I'll go to node and element tab click on translate nodes copy mode unequal distance in Z direction in the downward Z direction global Z I'll give the distance as minus 1.95 which is my girder depth and minus 0.3 as my 0.3 which includes the pedestal plus uh, bearing depth I'll select all click apply so, so these nodes have been created at the respective locations you can press your scroll button to activate this hand button so you can move around so next I'll click activate all go to isometric view I'll close this tab so I'll go to top view now I'll create the end dummy elements so I'll create elements change the metal property to dummy and the section to dummy cross beams click here I'll turn off this hidden view I'll zoom in click on this node and this node 
so here if you zoom in so I'll select this node the end node similarly on this side select this 20 node and 30th node go to top view I'll close this go to hidden view this is how my bridge looks so next step I'll create the transfers cross beams for my transfer distribution load distribution I'll click on translate elements now here to select the elements that I wanted to translate either uh, you can enter here the element numbers so this is for the node numbers so whatever you enter and press uh, press them they will be selected so like I'll select 25 space 26 space 29 and 30 as I know the element numbers I'll click enter so those have been highlighted so I'll translate them so I'll click on unequal distance in X direction global X 10 times at the rate 1 meter distance I'll give the section increment so what happens is the section for this elements uh, is end diaphragm from here I'll give a section increment so that f after this 5 times increment it would go up to the dummy cross beams so I'll give this section increment as 5 intersect node elements copy then I'll click apply so these are my cross beams in similar way I'll create he over here and over here now I'll select this elements 34 and 33 space 35 and 36 I'll translate them now I'll give the section increment as 4 so because I have selected the internal diaphragm this is 3 from here the 4 increments would go up to the dummy cross beam so that's why I've given the section increment as 4 so the elements that would be that would be copied would have the section property of dummy cross beams so I'll apply so I'll go to isometric view scroll button I want to see it so you can see here the sections have been properly assigned as a dummy cross beams so as we have given the thickness of the dummy cross beams as slab thickness go to isometric click close so next I'll create this overhang parts which is of 1.5 meter length so I'll go to extrude so I'm gonna extrude from node to line elements so I'll go to left view and click on single select select this part so you can see all these nodes have been selected so I'll change the material to dummy dummy cross beams click on translate and equal distance so I'll give the y direction as minus 1.5 meters and negative y click apply in a similar way I'll go to left view single select I'll select this nodes change it to plus y click apply go to isometric view this is how I've created the overhang parts Now I'll turn off this node numbers. So this is how my bridge gonna look like. So go to isometric view. Now I'm gonna create the uh, dummy edge edge beams. So I'll turn off this hidden option so you can see here we need to create the dummy edge dummy crash barrier beams so that I can apply the crash barrier loads. So I'll click close. Create elements dummy material dummy crash barrier this time I'll select click here I'll select this node the end node 
right I'll click close so you can see this hidden option so this is of the geometry of the bridge would look like so we have done with the geometry now 